Hello, everyone. I'm Shi Ye. I'm working in the Faculty of Humanities and Arts at Macau University of Science and Technology. Today, I'm going to present a paper, "The End of Design: Architectural Meaning Between Concept and Experience." Since I was in the second year of my undergraduate, I have started to think about why we need a design concept for each project. Why the visual presentation of the design is so important that is related so much to the final grade of our work. Every student project ends with an exhibition, where intellectual ideas are presented in the form of drawings, diagrams, models, films, and other artistic mediums. However, this might convey a sense to students. That architectural meaning is about finding concepts, and that it ends as these design concepts are presented in exhibitions. And the architect can be a single author. And architectural meaning is fixed once the concept is made. This may omit a fact that events take place in actual spaces are diverse, unchangeable, and unpredictable. There is at times a gap between design intentions and actual uses of an architecture. The actual effects to the user cannot be controlled by the architect. It seems the way in which meaning is generated by the architect is different from that by the user. This paper will firstly clarify these two ways to have meaning, exploring the reasons. Of the architect's interest in intellectual conception and visual presentation, and then examines the recent attempts in which the architect considers the user's agency and the diversity of experience in the design intention. These attempts can be brought into studio teaching, which could convey an idea to students that architectural meaning is dynamic and never ends with the end of design. There is one way of architectural meaning that can be considered developing from the architect's mind, from the architect's design philosophies, the circumstances of the site, the culture, and the complexities of the brief. Architects are at times in favor of constructing distinctive design philosophies, as to creating personalized identity. Design philosophies are. Usually reflected in design projects, the publications, and other methods of dissemination. The architectural meaning that generated from the architect's mind is referred to as conceptual meaning in this paper. Conceptual meaning is always in immaterial forms such as drawings, diagrams, videos, and texts, and some can be materialized. Into physical architectural forms, if it has chance to be built. Once people get to use a space, these users come to have their own understanding of architecture, and this is another way in which the meaning could arrive. This way of meaning is referred to as pragmatic meaning. The term pragmatic meaning comes out of the idea of pragmatism. That attempts to look away from supposed principles and towards consequence and fact. Pragmatic meaning cannot always be anticipated. It has diverse consequences according to immediate conditions of the user, which may be different from the intentional principles of the architect. It tends to see architecture as an ever-changing fact rather than a self-evident system of inherent meaning. So different from the conceptual meaning that is generative and fixed, the pragmatic meaning is emergent, changeable, and diverse. There are numbers of evidences pointing to the architect's great interest in conceptual meaning. In design competitions, the judgment is only based on conceptual presentations. In magazines, 
numbers of images are perfectly composed without any people or event included. Peter Eisenman has claimed that the real architecture only exists in drawings, regardless of whether it has been built or used. Japanese architect Arad Isozaki also argues that the unbuilt projects are the same as those buildings that have been built and demolished. The architectural habitus in favor of artistic skills ties architecture closely with fine arts. The origin of this fine arts idea could derive from Italian Renaissance, when a universal consensus was established that architecture was comprised in a modern system of fine arts. The autonomy of architecture can be derived from this time, as apprentice-trained builders began to separate into two professions, designers and builders. Designers were offered more freedom to engage with visionary concepts, and whose artworks were demonstrated through ideas and contemplation rather than manual work. The intellectual idea is considered to be superior to manual labor. This revived platonic idea brought them new means to practice, drawing and writing to affirm their new status. The change of the architect's status is also associated with the idea of artists as genius that started with the Renaissance and further developed in Romanticism and Modernism. This leads to the recognition of artists as mad contemplator whose works must be unusual and single-authored. Star Optics is influenced by the idea of artist as genius. A famous architectural work is always considered the work of the star architect. However, in practice, there are diverse agencies involved in building production. The term star architect ensures the architecture's sole authorship. The sole authorship enables the symbolic value of the star to be transferred to the whole team. It seems that star architects are more likely to be involved in public buildings with higher cultural significance. This kind of project is closer to the production of fine arts, seemingly autonomous from practical demands while representing a kind of aesthetics, compared with housing and industrial buildings, which respond directly to social and economical necessities. Architecture is seen as contaminated and demeaned by its association with pragmatic thoughts, so that the user is often regarded as a threat to the authority of the architect. Functionalism seems to be engaged with everyday needs of the user, but it offers a linear route from the architect to the user, which still manifests the architect's domination. Since then, there had emerged reflections on this linear route, more concerns on the user's agency, and attempts to conceptualize the diversity of the user in the architect's attention. This tendency includes the thinking of the disjunction and the association of the two ways of meaning. She may discover an alternative way of architecture that the architect's creation and the user's practice are disjunctive. They can be reciprocal contradictory and indifferent to each other. Concept form further demonstrates the idea of disjunction. The concept form is an abstract configuration that can be built in a particular place 
and welcomes its culture to be accommodated in the form. Trimit's project Park Lovelet has witnessed the process in which the abstract architecture configurations have gradually been accepted and engaged with the local culture. Trimit's idea of disjunction of architect's creation and the user's practice is analogous to Roland Barthes' disjunction of the author and the reader. Architect's meaning production is from his or her supposing. The meaning emerges from the reality is isolated from the architect's mind, which means that the architect enters his or her own death in actual spaces, and the users take over the duty in meaning production. The user's practice begins with an encounter with the space, and what happened before the space was built is not necessarily related to the user. Though deconstruction questions the functionalist idea of the one-to-one -one unity of the two ways of many, it is too radical to define that the two sides have separated features. The architect and the user can be associated without the architect being too deterministic. The architecture of flexibility works on foreseeing the reaction of future users. It departs from the one-to-one -one causal relationship of form and use. The flexible architecture tends to offer a one-to-many or many-to-many -many relationship. The one-to-many relationship could be realized by means of spatial redundancy and open plan. A redundant space is large enough to accommodate different uses, such as a concourse in a building. An open plan describes a building that can be arranged in different ways at different times. Both the flexibility by spatial redundancy and open plan is dependent upon the user's perception instead of a physical change. While the many-to-many -many relationship requires a change of physical forms of spaces by technical means. Polyvalence is another concept that tries to depart from one-to-one -one causal relationship of form and use. A space that incites multiple individual interpretations happen is one archetypal form of polyvalence, which is what Herman Hertzberger searches for. An archetypal form and the multiple uses constitute a one-to-many relationship. A polyvalent space tends to be suggestive instead of designative. The users are highly invited in the way the space seeks meaning. The design of Central Bee Hill and the Diagon housing have similar approaches. The architecture consists of repeated space units as half products and welcomes users to dedicate them according to individual demands. Flexibility and polyvalence both attempt to discover a relationship departing from the linear route from the architect to the user. However, the architecture in this way still tend to have determined architectural forms or programs, though the uses are supposed to be multiple. There is another kind of relationship where pragmatical meaning tends to fulfill the conceptual meaning. The architect looks toward open ends but only offers an incomplete structure of a building, and the building will be developed and finalized in a dynamic way by users. 
Only one pragmatic meaning is plurally generated in the long term, will the conceptual meaning be accomplished. In this way, users are not the threats, but the contributors in fulfilling the architect's concept. This idea can be explained with the Chinese project, The West Village. As to create social vitality for the community and the city in a sustainable manner, the building intended to be an architectural complex, a big open yard surrounded by the building. The architect claimed to create a collection of diverse and homogeneous architectural facades of everyday life, but offered only a building structure. The architect anticipated that future users could finish the detailed construction and plan future programs, so that his imagination would come true. Each household has its own part of facade on both sides of the building. There is no spatial division in the building, leaving to be arranged by users according to particular services. A couple of years after the building completion, the users have been well fitted in the physical spaces. Looking at the building facades from nearby streets, it presents a sort of diverse and collective facades with a strong sense of living. The spaces have been used for catering services, children's education, creative arts, health care services, and business offices. It is apparent to find from the numbers of signboards hanging on the facades that the south and east part of the building are more occupied. The users know the principle. The closer to the main roads, the more visual attractions it will have. Transient events happening on the sloping passages provide a distinct and dynamic image of the building. A circular passage in the court is used heavily, particularly after work in the evening when people come for jogging, walking and cycling and other activities. Unfixed events are frequently emerging in the side yards that has been used as children's playgrounds, lunch places and the cinema. Everybody who practices in the space helps to add pragmatic meaning and thus further accomplish the architect's concept. So I would conclude that conceptual meaning and pragmatic meaning is neither disjunctive nor one-to-one -one corresponding. They could be associated without conceptual meaning being too deterministic. Though architectural concepts and visual presentations are important to legislate the identity of architecture as an autonomous discipline, the autonomy of architecture is hardly survived. It has to attach to other agencies to make itself fully meaningful, and this idea is necessary to be brought into studio teaching. So this is my presentation. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.